I am Professor Redcap, and for the next hundred days, a beekeeper. It all started with one box, then two, then ten. Now, there are ten thousand tiny buzzing roommates. And for the next hundred days, they will live in my home. I did not know it then, but these bees were about to teach me more about loyalty, war, and survival than any textbook ever could. Finding the queen. The queen is everything. The moment you lose her, the hive collapses. Finding her is nearly impossible when everyone is wearing the same stripes. I searched frame after frame, getting stung more times than I could count. But then I saw it. The others were not just flying, they were literally marching. And at the center, there she was, longer, slower, commanding the entire crowd without saying a word. The queen was mine, and the hive was about to move in. Catching the queen was the easy part, but convincing 10,000 bees to follow her was another story. Operation Hive Move I turned an old cabinet into a hive with a tunnel leading outside. The temperature was perfect, good airflow and easy access to the world. I waited until nightfall to make the transfer, because bees cannot fly in the dark, and so I thought. The moment I placed the queen inside, the workers hesitated, some ignored her and others panicked. And when I forgot to zip my bee suit, I learned how small mistakes can deliver sharp lessons. By sunrise, the real question was not whether they would stay, it was whether I would survive long enough to find out. Settling in. After the chaos, a few bees began fanning their wings, spreading the queen's scent, and slowly, the others followed. By day four, combs were taking shape, perfect hexagons filling the frames. I would like to share a quick fact. Hexagons are nature's strongest and most efficient shape. It can have maximum storage and minimum material. The hive was now a city in the making, but like any city, sooner or later, enemies would come knocking. The first war. Trouble arrived in the form of hive beetles. They slipped inside, targeting eggs, before they could hatch. The bees fought hard, but beetle armor is tough. Then came the wasps, they wanted the queen. My bees swarmed her forming a living shield, stinging, and heating the invaders until they dropped. It worked, but half my colony was gone. And in the silence that followed, I realized the deadliest threat was still hiding inside. The hidden killer. When I thought the worst was over, I spotted them, the Varroa destructor mites. The tiny parasites sucking the life out of my bees, spreading deadly viruses. They have been hiding since day one, waiting for weakness. I had two choices, let nature run its course or fight, and I chose to fight. With an oxalic acid vaporizer, I risked my own health to gas the mites. When the smoke cleared, the floor was littered with their tiny bodies, and my bees had a chance again. But the hive was still fragile, and a single bad week could erase every victory. The new life. By day 30, eggs had become larvae. By day 41, the first new bee chewed through her cocoon, stepping into the hive. Over the weeks, more emerged, the buzz was back. They worked like a single organism, foraging, building, and guarding the queen. Each bee lives only about six weeks, but together, they built something greater than themselves. And soon, I would have to make the hardest decision of the entire hundred days. Saying goodbye. After one hundred days, it was time, I moved the colony outside, where they would have more space and freedom. But I kept one piece of comb, my first taste of honey, it was sweet, golden, floral. It was the reward for a season of stings, sweat, and science. These were not just my bees, they were my students, soldiers, and friends. And if you ever try the same, keep your roommates under 10,000. I'm your Professor Redcap here. Hit subscribe and let's keep learning together.